so last time I left off in the middle of talking about the um, amazing richness and depth of insight you can get from simple low-tech behavioral experiments, just measuring people's accuracy and reaction time to do simple basic tasks. Flash up a picture, say a face, and ask people to do a simple thing, and by careful experimental design, we can get these real insights about the nature of face processing. Okay, so we'll get into the brain soon, but I wanted to like, take some time to really um, show you guys that you don't always need fancy high-tech methods to reach deep insights. Okay, so very quickly reviewing what I showed last time, I talked about the inversion effect, Robert Yin's 1969 discovery, that, um, that a recognition of faces suffers much more when the faces are presented upside down uh, than recognition of other kinds of stimuli. The first real insight that maybe faces are processed in some kind of fundamentally different way from other things. Okay? Then we said, okay, how might they be processed differently? And then we talked about the part-whole effect, two, two different kinds of evidence that what you do when you process a face is automatically, whether you want to or not, you process the whole thing at once. Even if you try to process a part, you're not very good at it. Right? So when you teach people faces and then say, which is Larry versus which is Larry's nose or which is Larry's eyes or mouth or whatever, people do better with the whole face than with the part suggesting that they, they encode the whole face. And if you ask them to process a part, it's just not what the system wants to do, right? It wants to deal with the whole thing at once. And then we showed that that was true for faces, but not houses. And then we worried that those stimuli are so different from each other that that was terrible experimental, it wasn't terrible experimental design. It was what you could do in 1993. Um, and then I uh, pulled out the amazing solution to this problem that arises again and again and again in experimental design across the board. And if you're a face researcher, there's a beautiful answer that you don't have in other domains, and that is you test inverted faces. They're just like faces as stimuli, all the same visual properties, but they're not processed the same way. And this part whole effect does not happen for inverted faces. Okay, did everybody get that? Like that, that tells us that this is what's distinctive about faces, and it's really about faces, it's not about the fact that it's a grayscale image or some other kind of thing. All right, so that was a part whole effect. And then similar idea, but different design. The composite effect, if you ask people to identify just part of the face, in this case, the top of the face, people are, um, are distracted and confused and slowed down and make more errors if it's aligned than misaligned, okay? And again, that's because you, your system just isn't set up to enable you to just process the top. It wants to do the whole thing. And again, that effect, is found for faces but not cars, showing this is something about faces. And again, the beautiful control condition, that effect is not found for inverted faces, okay? So putting all that together, what we have is this idea that the representations we extract from faces are sensitive to inversion and are holistic in the sense, it sounds like fluffy and vague, but actually has these, this, these very particular uh, experimental oper operationalizations uh, in terms of the part whole effect and the composite effect. Okay? So that's, that was the, the big insights from simple behavioral experiments. Again, just reaction time and accuracy. That's it. Just the output of the system.